Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Reed, and go ahead and head down to the description and download the link of this ECG if you would like to follow along and make some notes. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like this video if you enjoy this content. So this is a really fun ECG. I think it's just a great example of uh, something that we sometimes often call. So um, let's, the first thing we do is we're gonna look at the forest. We're in the trees of my forest or the QRS complexes. And so maybe I'll come down here to V5. And I see we've got a regular complex rhythm. It seems to be a little bit wide, but it's regular and it stays regular throughout the entirety of the strip. If I measure the rate here, we say we have a QRS that lands on a solid line here. So I've got 300, 150, 100, 50. This is about 43, 43 beats per minute. So we have a um, pretty significant Brady cardio. And when you see 43 beats per minute, I, I want you to think of something. This is a this is not a 55 beat per minute Brady cardio. This is 43. 43 beats per minute really is not something that is common to the SA node unless it is incredibly sick. So when you see a Brady cardio that is this severe, I want you to think of a couple of things. Either a high grade second degree block, right? Where you have like two to one conduction or three to one conduction, right? Where you have double the amount of P waves and you have QRSs. I want you to also think of a complete, a complete block, okay? And so in a complete block, we would need to have an escape rhythm okay and so we know that escape rhythms especially if they arise from the AV junction we know that the AV junction escapes at a rate of 40 to 60 beats per minute if that's what's called upon it to do the reason why I tell you to, to jump to rule these out is because these are both high-risk diagnoses that you can you know someone can can die if you don't treat them so um, Let's take a look and see what we think here. So we, so we had narrow complex QRSs. I see P waves, right? It seems like there's some P waves. I see some P waves. But if you notice, the, the PR interval of these P waves seems to change, right? Look at this PR interval versus this one versus this one. So I'm kind of like, huh, well, what's going on? So let's take a look. Let's first evaluate my P waves, right? What is my atria doing? What is the morphology of these P waves? Well, the P waves are upright in lead one. They're upright in AVF, so that tells me that these are sinus P waves. Okay. Let's take a look and see how my AV node is handling those P waves, right? Because the sinus node is firing off, and we get a nice depolarization through the atria. Now it's the AV node's turn to do its job. And so my AV node is my PR interval, and like we were just kind of alluding to, my PR interval is changing every time, right? It seems to be longer, just as long, and then, and then look at this. This one, this PR interval is, is too short. This is too short. When you see PR intervals that are too short, right, this is less than 120 milliseconds, that makes you think that these P waves are dissociated from the QRS complex, or the atria is dissociated from the ventricles, dissociated from the ventricles. And so that makes me think of a heart block. And so I start to now, let's march my P waves. And so I like to march P waves. And so I'll come over here to V1. We can do that with our P waves. So I've got a P wave here. I've got a P wave here. I've got a P wave there. Got a P wave right before that QRS. I've got a P wave there. I've got a P wave there. So you can see my atrial rate is actually a lot faster than my ventricular rate, right? I would imagine, I would guess that because these are so far apart, the next P wave would be landing right inside of that QRS complex at the exact same time. That's probably what we're seeing. We just don't get to see it. And so my atrial rate, if I measure from the top of that P wave to the top of that P wave, say, we would get 300, 150, 100, maybe like 
95 beats per minute. That's my atrial rate. Okay, so we have an atrial rate of 95 beats per minute. And it doesn't seem that those P waves are really driving my QRS complex. My QRS complex is 43 beats per minute. That's my ventricular rate, okay? And so because we have a P to P interval that is regular, right? Every P to P is regular, right on time. And we have an R to R interval that is regular. But the atrial rate is greater than the ventricular rate. And there is no association between the two of them. It's not like it's a 2 to 1 or a 3 to 1 ratio. There's no ratio. There's no comparison. Then we can call this, based off of all that criteria, we can call this a third degree or a complete heart block, right? Or AV node block. So the AV node in this case is completely blocked. None of that P wave signal is getting to my QRS. That's why there is no association with the two. And so now that we've figured that out, now we need to turn to this idea of, well, where is the QRS coming from? Because if that is blocked, well, where is the QRS coming from? Well, we have an escape rhythm. It has to be an escape rhythm. There's no other choice. And it's 43 beats per minute. And so that thinks that tells me maybe it's coming from the ventricles. But maybe it's coming from the junction of the ventricles, right? Because sometimes we can have these junctional escape rhythms from like right here, right? And so I take a look at my QRS complex and I see that it's a little bit wide. I look at my duration of my QRS, my QRS duration is greater than 120 milliseconds, which makes me think that this could be a ventricular escape rhythm. But I also know that we can have uh, like bundle branch blocks and things that are still associated with these junctional escapes. And so I look for my wide complex QRS, I see in V1 is there's an RS R prime. So we have an RS R prime in V1, right? RS R prime. So we've got a right bundle branch block morphology in lead V1. And we've also got, if you notice, that our axis of our QRS is upright in lead 1. But I would say in AVF is more negative than positive. This one looks a little bit more positive. This one looks a little bit more positive, but that's because the P waves are buried in them, right? So this one, this one right here, that's not your true lead to beat because we have a P wave that's buried inside of there, right? So if you look where you got a very negative QRS and AVF, it's even more negative in lead two. That tells me that my QRS axis is markedly negative up and to the left, my QRS axis. And so when you see that in the setting right front of branch block, we've also got a left anterior fasicular block okay so this is where things get really cool is this is a complete heart block with an escape rhythm with a morphology of right bundle branch block and a left anterior fascicular block I would call this a true tri fascicular block and the escape beat is rising from the left posterior fascicle. That's why it's giving it that morphology. So that's where the escape beat's rising from. So this will be a true trifascicular block where the right bundle branch is blocked, and then we have two fascicles that come off of the left bundle, which is the left anterior and the left posterior fascicle, right? And so we're getting an escape rhythm that's kind of coming off distal to the block of the left posterior fascicle. Really cool stuff. If you don't understand these concepts, don't worry. It's a, it's a hard... Um, Concept to understand. Luckily, the treatment doesn't really change for this person, regardless of if it was a trifascicular block or not, right? So, um, I just want you to really focus on if you're watching this video and you're a new learner, to focus on the fact that this was a complete heart block with an escape rhythm, right? So, that's good. Good job. And so, let's look at our QT interval. Our QT interval, we measure from, I measure from R to R, and as long as my T wave ends by the midpoint, which it does. I'm happy with my QT interval. We look for pathological Q waves and ST and T wave changes throughout, and I don't see any. 
So no active ischemia or previous infarction. And so when I put this all together, what do I get? Well, I have a sinus rhythm. My sinus node is beating at a rate of 95 beats per minute. However, I have a third degree heart block with an escape rhythm at 43 beats per minute in the pattern of a right bundle branch block and a left anterior fascicular block. And so I would call this a tri-fascicular block. So I hope this video helps you understand. Uh, remember, tri-fascicular block is not just a bifascicular block plus any AV block. It has to be a progressing block, right? And so meaning it's not just like a first degree or a second degree. There needs, it needs to be something that shows you that that uh, last fascicle is also blocked. So I hope this helps. And if you have any questions about the video um, or any of the content, feel free to comment. And if not, see you on the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks.